Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for the eighth episode of the Rockport Studio Tour. In this episode is a very is our very first uh, guest artist joining us, and I'd like to introduce her now, uh, Juliana. Hi everyone. Hi. How are you all doing out there? I'm doing great. We're doing great. I'm here at Diane's uh, Silver Silo as her uh, guest artist, and I'm just super blessed to be able to have this opportunity. Now, some people are like, why are you at someone else's studio? Now, you you kind of work here now, don't you? I do. I, I consider myself, I guess, uh, Diane's assistant. Um, I work with her in um, her jewelry making endeavors. Um, as well as I've been um, designing and doing. Uh, Ooh, whoa, we're going to lose you for just a minute. So, uh, how about we. Yeah, I work alongside with you at the Tyler. You're cutting in and out a little bit. How about we catch back up with you in just a second? And we're going to go through and introduce some of our artists. And, but first, before we do that, I need to get on the horn and, and thank some of our sponsors. So I want to thank First Community Bank. First Community Bank has a great contactless IBM machine. This allows you to do all your banking uh, through a machine outside. You don't have to come in contact with a single person. So if you're part of a, a little more cautious as we all are nowadays, this is a great opportunity. And they're right on Business 35 in downtown Rockport. Uh, next is artist roll call. So I just want to remind everyone that this is a fundraiser. It's part of how, what we're doing. We're letting everyone know about the great artists here in Rockport. And if you watch any of our shows, any of the past episodes or current ones, and you reach out to that artist and make a purchase, 20% of that sale will go to the Rockport Center for the Arts. Just let them know that you watched it on RST Live. So great, with that, let's introduce our artist. Doc, can you get started? I sure can. Um, if you'll go ahead and uh, get me co-host, I'll be able to see everybody's- uh, Oh, I okay. forgot, I'm <laughs> That's so our, sorry. I'm you're okay. Time. I got the speaker view um, though, but I can, I can you go are, there. You all are seeing some of our behind the scenes. Yeah. Are so that better now? That's way better, I got it. I can see everybody now, right on. Great. So and to my left, we, oh, yeah. I'm going to get right into it. So to my left, I have Barbara Sparkman. Hi, Barbara. She was on last week. What do you got going on there, Barbara? Hey. I'm, I'm, in case you didn't see last week, I'm an, an abstract artist, painter. And uh, most of my paintings end up being abstract landscapes, like this one. It's oil and cold wax. And that's what I showed in my demo last, last week. So. You can, you can always look that up on YouTube. <laughs> wow, great, thanks. And next we have Elsa to my right. Hi, Elsa, how you doing? What you got going on there? Hi, I'm great. I've been uh, lately been working on my website and doing some painting. So um, basically you can reach me at elsamatthews.com. Remember Matthews has only one T, so. Look it up. It just got some new exciting work on that page. All right, great. All right, and then next we have Diane Johnson. Hi, Diane. How you doing? What do you got going on there? Hey, Doc. I'm in my office, not working on jewelry today because Juliana has taken over the studio, which is perfect, and I know she's going to do a fabulous job. Right on. Right on. Okay, and then uh, next we have Anita Diebel. How you doing? What do you got working on? Oh, I'm uh, working on cards, and I don't know if they show oh, up, but I great. did. Oh, it looks like a longhorn. Longhorn long yeah. horn cards. And, oh, and those are super patriotic. Oh, uh, yes. So there's, uh, I work on a little bit of everything. I'm a painter, but I also do cards, and I'm even working on some watercolor jewelry, so. Oh, that wow. oh, and your your studio downtown is open now, right? Yes, my studio downtown is open. I'm right next to Latitude Restaurant. If you know Rockport, if you don't, it's very easy to find. And by the way, they have a great happy hour. 
And all I have to do is walk across the driveway. But I'm very close to Stan Irvin's studio. He's also downtown. So we're lucky Great. to have two working studios downtown. Great. Uh, Who's next, Doc? All right. So next to her, I have Robin Hazard. How you doing, Robin? I'm fine. What you got going on? Well, I had a lot of personal stuff I've had to deal with lately. So I haven't been in the studio this week. All right. But you have some great artwork behind you, Thank you. right? Yeah. Thank you. I'm yeah. uh, mostly a pastel artist, and then sometimes I also work in oils, larger oils. Yeah. And where can people see your work, Robin? Well, I'm showing in Little Rock at Boswell Moreau Fine Art. I'm also showing in Dallas at Cerulean Gallery, um, right across from SMU. And I'm showing at the Felder Gallery in San Antonio. And then wow. I have couple of pieces here at the Arts Center. Wow. wow, you say you're not busy, but you seem busy to me. <laughs> Busier than it, yeah, than it sounds. <laughs> right Who's on. next, Doc? All right, next that we have Vivian. Hi, Vivian, how you doing? I'm fine, how are you? Good, what do you got going on? This is a plate I pulled from the kiln. And I love that star pattern. Um. Yeah, it, you know, glazes will do what glazes will do. Uh, I'm just thinking <laughs> green. That's not green, but that's okay. I'll oh. take it. <laughs> um, and live and learn. I'm, live and learn. I'm sorry? I said live and learn. Live and learn. That's right. And I'm uh, V Rose Pottery on Instagram, and my work can be found at the Rockport Art Center. Great. Right. Thank Center you. Park. Who's next? All right, next I have Terry. Hi, Terry. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Thank you. I guess what I do mean, you got going on there? Uh, well, I'm doing a little bit of work in jewelry, um, mostly with sea glass and coral. And, uh, Excellent. Where can people see your... Ah, oh, that's beautiful. My, my next one. To be this beautiful piece uh, mm -hmm. in a necklace. So I'm wow. So that's right all on. sea glass. That's gorgeous. Yeah, it's all has a beautiful um, ocean patina. Yes. And so for those of you who aren't on the on the coast, sea glass is uh, glass, scrap glass and from bottles, broken bottles and things will be in the ocean. And it gets beat up at the bottom of the, but from the waves and the sand, and it makes those nice soft edges as well as that kind of hazy look. It's a, a very beautiful piece. So that's amazing. That's beautiful. I look forward to seeing those finished pieces. Yeah. Who's next? All right, next on the list, I got Deborah. Hi, Deborah. How you doing? What you got going Hi, on? Hi, I'm doing great. Thank you. I'm uh, putting the fancy gold stuff on my. Love in the Baroque series. It's actually silver, but uh, here's one that's done and ready to hang. And wow. uh, this made with the uh, uh, a, a mold of the dolphins off of the cannon from La Belle Shipwreck. Wow, very and cool. I love right these. I, 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 they're great fun. Plus, I've got a cool Merganser piece that is in mid process. Let's see if I can. There's the drawing of it, and then here's the actual sculpture. Wow. Uh, wow, gorgeous. That's a porcelain piece. Anyway, it's in process still, so I have some more. Wow, you've got a lot going on, too. And I have a gazillion things. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> Great. And who's next? All right, next we got um, Jean. Hi, Jean. How you doing? I think she's on mute, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, good. there we can hear now. How Hi, you doing? <laughs> That's all right. How's everybody doing? We're doing, doing good. Great. We're doing good. I'm excited about tonight. Yeah, what's going on in the volunteer scene at the Rockport Center for the Arts? Well, we're getting ready for our 4th of July Art Fest. So that's very exciting. It is. Art Fest is happening. We don't know exactly what shape and form it is. We we're working on that, but it's because of volunteers like Jean that we're able to do that type of event here in Rockport. So Jean, thank you so much. And we are looking for volunteers for the event. So if you yeah. are interested in volunteering for 4th of July, uh, 
privately or among in the crowd, please let us know and reach out to the Rockport Art Center. Thanks. Yeah. And Don, Thank you. your last one in, what are you working on right now? Uh, well, I'm still working on the hummingbird feeders. I'm refining some of the things that's outside right now, checking out the hummingbirds. So we're going to see if they can drink from it and all that. And if it works out, so, I'll have it in a couple of weeks. I have a I have a few questions for about those hummingbird feeders because I told my husband about them. Oh yeah, and uh, he's very interested. How much will those go for? They'll go for about twenty five bucks. Um, it's got a little hanger on it, and the hole I think is about the right size. Um, right now I'm just kind of figuring out if it's you know. You're gonna need a funnel to fill it up or if it'll you can pour it actually in there i don't want it to be too big so a bug crawl in it so i want it to be kind of about 10 millimeters i think it's about the right size Great. that way it's fillable and the hummingbirds don't get stuck in it or anything like that awesome and doc has work at the rockport center for the arts as well yep. as on his own website so thank you so much so we're gonna thank go you. back to juliana juliana let me take you off of mute Oh, there you are. Take it away. Tell us about the silver silo and working with Diane. All right. So first, I kind of wanted to give a little bit of a backstory of how I was uh, got here through my schooling um, and had this amazing opportunity to work with Diane. Wait, um, you grew up in Rockport, right? Um, I did. I actually moved here in 2009 and graduated high school here and um, and now go to uh, college here in Corpus at a &M. Uh, at TAM UCC? Yes, in Corpus so, AM. Just shout out, go Islanders. Yes, Gotta do that. <laughs> All right, wonderful. And so how did you meet up with Diane? Um, so I, well, I, through different connections, actually, I worked in a Nita studio right now that she's in, used to be Kimmy's Fine Foods. And um, I went and worked with her and um, then through one of her friends, Danya, she's also a, a silversmith. Um, I met Diane and came out and um, was just coming out for a tour of the studio, not knowing that I was actually in an interview. Um, and so Diane after uh, hired me and gave me um, a job and kind of took me on as her, I guess, apprentice, you could say. And um, yeah, she's, she's taught me a lot. And I'm very blessed to have this opportunity through her. Great. I like all the beating on the silver. You got any of that stuff going on? And you can beat on any silver today? Not today. Um, but we do that. <laughs> I have some pieces that I have done that on though to show you. Um, but I'm just I want to show you first kind of some where I kind of got started and how I've um, my art career has kind of crossed um, gone through. So here I have some ceramic pieces. Um, originally, that was kind of going through school. That was my first passion, I guess you could say in school. Can we zoom up on them a little bit with the camera? Yeah. yeah. So it was kind of right, like Stan, Stan yeah. Irvin. Yeah. He sat down at the wheel and he's like, boom, this is mine. Is that what yeah. it was like I, for you? Yeah, I, I fell in love with um, throwing and these are all hand built. Um, and I actually had a wrist injury and um, couldn't throw anymore. And so for me, that was kind of like a, a wake up call to, you know, and for me to explore other mediums. And so I began doing some metal pouring that you can see here. This is um, poured aluminum. And oh my gosh. Um, actually did this in Greg Reuter's class. So shout out to Greg if y'all know Greg. Oh, uh, Greg. And um, this is um, carved plaster that we put um, an enamel paint on after um, the sculpture that I did. And so from there, I kind of- um, Now, are these for sale? These are not, these are not. Oh, I do okay. have to give away though that I will be showing y'all later. And the jewelry Perfect. all that I will be showing you in just a minute is for sale. Wonder, oh yeah, keep going, keep going. I just yeah. wanted to make it clear for our audience what, what yeah, was going on true. here. But yeah, um, so um, from there and from schooling, I've been interested in quite a bit of mediums. Um, I've worked with wood and um, I love um, iron pouring. I was a part of the iron pour here that we had in Rockport as well. Um, oh yeah another shout out to Leticia and yeah, Greg Leticia. um and so because of that and being able to work here with Diane I mean we work in metal we work in silver and so it was really really cool to be able to see those processes that I would do in large scale sculptures and um, be able to do them kind of on a smaller scale and be able to create like mini sculptures as an art and so these are some of the pieces that I've been able to um do here at the studio with Diane Ooh. some this is yeah let's zoom in on those oh yeah those are beautiful 
So you mm -hmm. made these at Diane's studio. This is some of yes. your silver work. Wow. Yes, she's been amazing to let us kind of take free reins on some of my designs. Yes, she used from China in this in this um, in this medium. Oh, could, hey, can you just get a little closer to the phone while you're talking? We just want to make sure we're picking up your voice. Can you hear me now? Is that better? Yes, just okay, like perfect. the commercial. So tell okay. us about these. And so um, these, a lot of the, when I first started working, um, making my own designs with Diane, um, I really was fascinated with what I called like the scraps. So she would make a design and the pieces of silver that were kind of left over. I was fascinated with them. And so I took those and kind of used those as um, inspiration for me constructing these and designing these. So all of, uh, most of these are made um, from scraps. And so like this was a bracelet that I uh, manipulated and um, it had some patterning on it. Um, Did you bang on that with a mallet like Diane showed us? Of course I did, absolutely. <laughs> and added some copper um, accents on it. And these two, this was a piece of reticulated silver, the demo that Diane had done um, oh, during wow. her tour. This is a piece of that same kind of reticulated material uh, silver that I um, attached there. Now, please tell us, what does reticulated mean? For those so, that don't remember. So how I understand it is, when you heat up the metal to where the surfaces, um, the surface layers of the metal begin to melt. And as they cool, they kind of get this, I call it moon texture, like moon surface. And the molecules of the, the silver get disturbed and get agitated and like create this unique kind of moon-like texture on top of the, the silver. Um, so it's it's heating, um, sometimes it takes, and every piece of silver I found is different for me when I, when I do it at least. Um, sometimes it works great, and Diane knows this, it works just like you want to, and sometimes it is, has a mind of its own. Um, and so I feel like that's how fire works in any kind of metal melting. But um, so yeah, that's how my understanding of what reticulated kind of means. Okay, yeah, what so, else do you have to show us? Sure. So um, I'll just kind of continue on kind of talking about um, where now kind of where I'm at. Um, in my schooling, I'm working towards my BFA. I'll be graduating um, TAMU CC next semester. And I know, I'm very excited. So is that in December, December that, 2020? Yeah. Yes, December, I'll be graduating and I will be having my BFA exhibition December 12th, I believe, um, in the Islander Gallery. So, um, and so yeah, with this, I just also, <laughs> yeah, uh, on your calendar, my friend. Uh, come out and see. And so, as we all know, like we're all facing right different environments, different scenarios um, as artists with our making right now because of the, the, the global situation with the pandemic. And so, um, for me as a student, as a BFA student, that really changed the way for me that I made. Um, I have been in school for quite a while in college and it's kind of become my norm. And I didn't realize until this kind of happened how heavily I relied, <clears throat> excuse me, on my tools that I had access to and the community that I was a part of. I mean, I would see them at least four times a week. And um, they were a big part of my making and my creative process. And so when that was kind of un, like we had no idea, we talked at the time, if we knew that that was our last aluminum pour, if we knew that that was our last time being able to work in the studio, together it would have been very different and so, so I was what on has it it been, Juliana what has it been like what has it been like as a a, a studio an art studio student and yeah. a university during yeah. this pandemic how has it been and what adjustments have you had to make so because of um the pandemic you know I was on a completely different track for my show and in just my creative process, my personal creative process. Can you explain um, what you mean by your show, just so for folks who don't have BFA? Yeah, for sure. Get your BFA degree, Bachelor of Fine Arts degree, um, to have a solo exhibition um, of a cohesive So it's your thesis, work. right? I'm sorry? It's kind of like your thesis? Yeah, it's kind of like, like a thesis, yeah, like that a grad student would have or something like that that they and so um, 
for me, I've been working kind of towards that, pushing towards that um, this last semester. And now I was on a track um, in my creating, I was actually doing textile and wood sculptures. And um, because of the environment switch, I was having to work from home and I didn't have access to a wood shop. And so for me, I was craving something that I could be confident in and that I could be comfortable. Um, and for me, I had grown up quilting with my grandmother um, and my aunt surrounded by them from a young age. And I can consider that like my first exposure to the arts. And um, so for me, I, I started doing tests and started sewing pieces of fabric scrap fabrics that I had together. We're losing you a little bit. Out designs and that I had in the bookshelf. Um, it's titled Veggie Suit. And I worked on this with my grandmother and created this. And I, I was just like looking at this and pondering and thinking like, man, I find a lot of confidence in this craft. Um, it's definitely an art form. And I didn't realize how much math was involved. I must have forgotten that. Um, until I started, you know, doing my own sketches and stuff. And it's, it's, it's very processy. Um, and so I wanted to kind of go in this direction, but my view on this and art has changed because of my schooling and the people that I've come in contact with, like Diane and, and like the people that I've gone to school with, professors, and um, just this community in Rockport anyway, has changed my, um, my view and my appreciation for art. And so we'll move over here. Some of these pieces that I've done. So I created these um, for for my show. They're intended for my show. Um, for to get your BFA the semester before you graduate, you have an interim review. Juliana, before Juliana, to, um, pitch your idea and your question that you're trying to. Okay. Yeah, We're losing you a little bit. There she goes. Up. We're losing you. Can you get closer to the house? Here. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah, we just better. can't go to that side, so we're gonna have to okay, look at okay. it from afar. So those over yonder. Um, yes. <laughs> so, um, so I created those in the intent for my interim review for my BFA, and so. I had found inspiration, um, if some of you know Joseph Elbers, he's an artist, and Mark Rothko. Um, uh, Mark Rothko is a color fill painter, and Joseph Elbers is a color theorist. And I really, really found interest and passion. I had taken a color theory class in school, and that really propelled my passion for the relationship of color and the directional line that you can see when you butt up to you know, colors together. Juliana, got to get closer to the phone, please. OK. And you know, in there we go. When, when I'm sketching out these ideas, those things are coming to mind, the color relationships and how colors interact together. And so, so what, did you go up to Rothko's chapel at all um, I in have research? Not yet. I really, really want to. Um, we've talked about my family maybe taking a trip up there um, to Houston this summer um, to go and see that. But I've done um, a lot of research on those two artists and they really are my work, yeah. Um, so I've, I've made those and um, based kind of inspired on some of um, Joseph Elber's um, color studies and uh -huh. things like that. Here's another, here's another salt piece. And, you know, looking back into quilting and, and the passion that kind of all started, I feel like my passion for art. Um, I wanted to pay homage to quilting, but I wanted to express like my designs and my ideas and really showcase that you know, the schooling and all of the experiences that I've had to get me to this point has influenced not only the way that I see art, but the way that I actually make books. And so um, it is a goal of mine to also include them, not to necessarily be you know, your standard sizes, but to be all kinds to kind of showcase um, the difference in kind of my view. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I've been working on outside of the studio that um, in my schooling and how that's kind of pushed me I've, I've been blessed. We did, um, we did take a break, um, you know, because of social distancing and so on and so forth from me coming out to the studio for a period of time. And that was hard. Um, this has also become my norm, being with Diane and working here. Um, 
but I still had sewing to work on like I do here at work. And so that was really important to me and helped me through that. Um, but I am so beyond blessed to be able to now be back here and be able still social distancing, even though it's just the two of us, um, and be able to continue making the garments here that I've been able to do, which I'll show you right now. If you'd like. Great. And so this is the work you deal with at Diane's studio. Yes, this and is the work. This is. So, so you have the job. Now this is your creation. Diane, do, does she stand over you and telling you what to make and where to go? No, not, not, no, not with the, um, the garments. Um, starting out, you know, she had had um, some <clears throat> designs done and her and her daughter, Lindsay, was here working with her at the time. And she does, Lindsay does, and still does a lot of the leather work here, um, the purses and such that are made. And so, you know, at first they showed me the designs and kind of, you know, what they had been doing and what they kind of expected. And, um, but Diane knew that I had, um, when I came here, she knew I was an art student and she was, she really gave me a lot of creative freedom, even off the bat. And I'm very um, honored to have that. And so, but now, um, you know, I, I would come up with a des design and show it to her and get her feedback. And um, she would be like, oh yeah, I love that or run with it. Or oh, maybe, you know, let's, let's do this. And which is great as artists, we are able to create, critique each other's work. Um, and so these are some of the de designs. Oftentimes Diane, with Diane's work, you, um, she's known for her beautiful indigos that she um, makes and creates. Um, artwork with. And so like some of these pieces here are indigo that you all may be familiar with or even own one. Um, and so this last trip that she, <laughs> that she took, she goes to um, Arizona. Oh, uh, no, excuse me. Uh, Tucson. Yeah, Tucson. She goes to Tucson every August and um, goes and gets this beautiful mud cloth. And this last um, August that she went, we were kind of talking and um, we we're like, what if we got some other colors, more, you know, more than the indigo? What if we kind of branched out and see what they had to offer um, there? And so she came back with a plethora of like beautiful, rich um, colors that were different than what we had seen, like this green one here um, and different reds and just kind of beautiful um, colors and, and designs. So they do come um, with this print when we get them the pieces of fabric, and then I design and kind of cut and make them into pieces. So cool. What else do you have to show us? Here's some other ones here. And how much do these sell for? So they vary depending upon the style. Um, these new ones um, that we create are run about 150. Very cool. So these are great gifts for mom, especially for the summer when you come to the coast. They're great, uh, they, nice and breezy. They are, they're great. They kind of, um, you know, different, the different um, mud cloth fabrics, they have different weight. Every piece is unique. And um, so if you see one that you like here, these will, these ones for sure will be at um, the Art Center downtown if you see one that you like. Great, Juliana, what's your strongest inspiration with each one of your mediums you work with? Cause you work with clay you work with wood you work with fabric yes yes but so what's I, the biggest inspiration so for me i feel like nature is a big inspiration for me um when i was younger and i um we moved here in 2009 um but before that we lived in minnesota and um we lived on 10 acres and it was beautiful and you know i built tree houses with my dad and we still live on a little bit of property right now and being able to come out here to Diane's and Al's beautiful property, um, the the organic textures um, and nature aspect has really, really um, influenced my work. I can see across the different mediums for sure. Great. So you have a demo coming up for us. Is that I right? Do. I do. Um, I know. Well, that how about this? You give me a moment to thank a few more of our sponsors, <laughs> and when I come back, you can introduce what you're going to show off today. Yeah, we, have, we also have a question in the chat room too. Okay, how about you take that question and I'll get ready. Okay. 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 Julian, what's your strongest in inspiration with each oh. one of your mediums you work oh, with? Oh, we covered that question, Doc. No, we did. I didn't hear. <laughs> Nature. I, I'll just, I'll just come up. Nature has kind of, I think, been my biggest inspiration. Yes. Oh, great. Sorry <laughs> I missed that one. That's okay. I'll <laughs> understand. 
So I also want to, today, we also need to thank Prosperity Bank. Prosperity Bank is one of our big supporters of the arts in Rockport. They're right downtown on Business 35. Uh, if you want uh, some friendly banking service, just stop right in at Prosperity Bank. Thank you so much for supporting the Rockport Center for the Arts and the Rockport Studio Tour. And Karen Mella, man, I saw her streaming live on Facebook today, showing off one of her properties, going around, giving, I mean, it was like I was there. So if you're interested about coming to Rockport, moving to Rockport, maybe you came, you stayed in a VRBO or a, a hotel and you wanna stay for a longer period of time, give Karen Mello a call, she'll help you out. All right, with that, we're gonna go back to Juliana. If we can get her camera, let's see. Ah, there we go. Okay, can y'all hear me? Sure yeah, can. give me one All moment right. to put the spotlight on you. There you are. What's going on here? Okay, so on our garments, um, we make all of our tags and um, markings on the garments to show that this is silver silo. This is um, the, to make them known as silver silo, D Diane and Juliana's designs. So this is how we make our tags. So we have leftover pieces of leather from purses that we make just like this one here. And so we use a brander. Diane has gotten this custom silver silo um, brand um, made. Also, there's ones like this that we have on some of our purse designs, like a feather that she has. And so I'm just gonna do a short demo here of doing the branding and then how we sew it to the garments to um, essentially brand the garments. Just, it's really hot, by the way, very, very warm. So just, just upside down. There you go, there you do. Silver side. And so we make multiples of these. We have different um, leathers that we use. This is more kind of a, um, a soft leather, but yet it's still kind of malleable. Um, here is a... Um, so the Super tool soft. you're just heating up, right? It's not the leather you're heating up to? Yes. So you're burning no, it? No, so this is uh, electric and so it's plugged in. Yes, so it's plugged into the wall and it gets, it heats up, kind of like a glue gun, I guess I could uh, reference yeah. it to, how it heats up. And it stays so, super hot unless you turn it off or unplug it. So is it a yes, brander and an imprinter? So it's, it's a brand um, attachment. You don't want to do it while it's hot because you would brand your finger. Uh -huh. um, but you unscrew them and there's different attachments that you can buy. You can, I'm sure you can order one of these off of Amazon. Um, yeah, you don't want to touch that. You'll get a tattoo. No. <laughs> um, and so you attach that to the brander and then the whole piece gets hot. This heats up and also heats yeah. up this piece right here. It's kind of like an iron. So this is how you make your little tags for all of your silver <laughs> silo things. Way to use scrap. That's fantastic. And then it's a great way to, it's a great idea just to, to really customize your own products, even if. Yeah. Absolutely. And, um, you know, you can get these custom made, um, the different um, pieces. Very cool. So from there, I'll take you over to one that has already been done and take you over here to the sewing machine. And so this is one of the pieces um, that I created. This is kind of a scrappy design. And it has some buttons here. This so is what? perfect. We had a question from yeah. the audience asking to, for you to show a white top. And here yeah. you are. Here's one. Um, I have a, a short sleeve one I can show later too if they'd like. Um, but yeah, this yeah. is one of the long sleeve ones that I made during kind of the fall, or, the fall season, the winter season. Um, but, you know, great to still wear indoors here because you know, Texas sure does love their AC anywhere you go. Yeah. So, That's something too. I've learned. Yes, something I learned too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so we just kind of attach it here. I use these little handy dandy clips. They are a lifesaver. Because some things you can't pin like this leather. I mean, I'm sure you could pin it, but you got to have some muscles. So then I bring this over to the sewing machine. <laughs> And this, this is, um, I mean, it's an average sewing machine. It's a singer, but it's a heavy duty sewing machine. And so we're able to sew through some of the thinner uh, leathers. We have some thicker leather that we use here, 
that it's a little too hefty for this. So we have the leather sewing machine over there that we make um, the purses with. But this is strong enough and tough enough to sew through just this piece of leather in the fabric. So here and you line it up, take your stitch in. Handy dandy little cutter on the side. And dependent upon the garment, um, kind of what it calls for is the orientation that I'll sew it on. Um, for this one, because it's a it's a straight back, some of the kimonos that I've done recently have um, kimono design, have a V neck, and so I might do it um, vertical compared to horizontally sewn on. So is this like the final step in a garment that you're making? Yes, so this is one of the final steps that we do here. Trying to get everything sewn on and sewn together. And um, little, little strings like this anywhere. And then we have a mini scissors and then we just cut all of your Excess strings. And there you go. Silver sun. Woo! Very cool. That looks <laughs> slick. Thank Very you. professional. So and then the garments done. So what sizes do your garments come in? How do you know what size to make them? So um that was one thing that I really wanted to make available um, in designing some of the garments that they can be worn by multiple sizes. So, um, you know, oftentimes, I mean, our, our garments are geared towards women, but, you know, women get them too. Um, but so we're, we come in all different shapes and sizes. And so I didn't want, you know, someone necessarily to walk into the gallery or wherever we're selling them and not be able to purchase it because it's way too big or way too small. And so we kind of make them at an average size. We don't say one size fits all, um, but like this garment here that I'm wearing, um, somewhat larger or smaller than me can wear it. And so I do, I have made some larger garments and some smaller garments um, upon request. I've also, we've also done sizing um, for a particular um, one. But so yeah, we do kind of like an average sizing. We've, um, you know, done some measurements of an average garment and that's kind of how we, how we gauge. Great. While you're over there, can you pull out one of the white shirts for Ms. Vickers? So here is one of the white um, garments. It's kind of just like an overthrow. It's open in the front and a shorter sleeve here. Has a nice fringe on the bottom. This came on the piece of mud cloth when it came when Diane got it. Um, here's more of um, kind of like a tunic, I guess you would call it. It's a pullover. It has a, a square neck. And Those are open. beautiful. Yeah, it's sewn. It has the illusion that it's open on the sides, but it is sewn. It does have kind of a cut, uh, an open cut here. It is more of a short sleeve. So here. Juliana, uh, yeah. As you're, because you're seeing, you have like your quilting and you have your, your fabric textile making and you have your ceramics and you have your wall hangings. What is the unifying factor through all of these? Is I there? guess sewing, I guess. <laughs> I just have a love for sewing um, through across the board throughout the different, you know, practices as in garment making or quilting or uh, making wall hangings or even in the sculpt sculptural aspect. Before this, I, before the pandemic, I was doing um, felt pieces. I was sewing and creating different textures with fabric. Um, so I guess sewing and fabric, just the fascination with fabric and different weaves, even through the mud cloth here, like the different sides of weave um, that they make in the strip weaving is just so fascinating to me and the colors and how they do it. Speaking of the mud cloth, you know, I, I know it's more organic and it's, it allows for breathability and the wind to come through. So it still is, is not great for the coast, but how do you take care of that? What do you do? Does it, is it dry clean only or can you no. go swimming in them? 
the, the nice thing about the mud cloth is that it's super, super low maintenance, I guess you could call it. Um, just a simple wash with similar colors like you would in your normal um, clothing and tumble dry. That is all that you need to do. You may, if you know, you would like to and prefer to hang dry it and then fluff it in a dryer you can to keep it, you know, I don't know, more delicate if you would prefer, but no, I mean, you Some can dryers just, are brutal. Dry yeah. You can just throw it. Low maintenance is always, I think, a universal desire for everyone. And so, yeah, they're very, very low maintenance. For sure. Okay, okay. so uh, you're, you have a, uh, what's that behind you? This is our giveaway today. Ooh, let's get a close up. Yeah, yeah let's close up on that. There we go. Little fuzzy. Oh. So it has kind of a um, an X cross design, white on gray. That's uh, it's a lighter. Has a silver silo. Nice. And when was this? What has is the, the natural age of this? What season is this? I'm sorry. Season? When, when did it? I create it? Yeah. Yeah, this is one of our, our um, spring fabrics, I guess you could say. This is one oh, of the so newer it's fabrics. this season. Yes, this is this season. This is one of the newer pieces that I've designed. So. Okay, so we're going to be giving this one away. But yeah. if people want to buy, how do they buy your, th your work? So they can go um, to the Art Center downtown in Rockport and we have uh, many different garments there in the back that you can look through and choose from, um, as well as, of course, Diane has her jewelry there as well. So yeah, the Art and Center is very, very good to us for that. And also, if you all want a custom piece, you want Juliana to make something specifically for you, and you don't quite see it on the racks behind you, just give us a call at the Art Center, and we'll be happy to put you in touch with Juliana. Yes, and we do she... have, here, come over and show you. We do have some um, pieces left. They're few and far between. Um, Cause she only goes, you know, and gets so much um, in a season. And so we have some indigos left and some um, other colors that she got and some whites. Um, but yeah, we just, we love making and we'll continue to make. Uh, so I have a, I have a couple question. questions. Yeah, go ahead. Questions. No, you go first. Okay, I'll go first. All right. So the when you say limited edition or limited, where do you get this stuff at and how, how much do you usually get at a time? So that is all kind of dependent upon Diane. Um, okay. She goes, she goes to Tucson, like I said, every August and um, usually. See, Diane August. is the investor of this. Yeah. The <laughs> yeah. She's, she's the one she's that front the costs. <laughs> she's the one that blesses me with the resources and then I'm able to, you know, make the designs. Right. She it's goes a group speak. effort, a very, you know, it's great. Yeah, she goes and she gets the fabrics and um, then I'm able to, she brings them back and I'm able to design them. But, you know, she can only fit so much in the box um, that she ships back. She ships it back. So, yeah. Okay, so she doesn't order it. She actually goes and picks it up herself. And She does, and, oftentimes. And picks no, out the item. She does. She goes and okay. um, the majority of our fabrics that she hand picks. Yes. Hand picks. Okay, that's what I Julia, wanted to hand pick. Yeah. I have a question for you. So some people here are watching and they, they've never been to Rockport, but they also want to be a living, thriving artist. Yes. What would you say about living in Rockport and fulfilling that dream? So for me, um, I knew that this was an artist town. Um, you could see, you know, the festivals, the art festival that we have in July, um, every July around the 4th. And I could see even before, you know, when I was in high school, that this was an artist community. Um, as I was in school, though, I had seen kind of uh, maybe an age gap um, in, you know, the the artists that are here in Rockport in my age. And Wait, that what? There's an age gap? There is. <laughs> and uh, I was kind of concerned at the time because I love our city. I love the community here and um, the, the relationships that I've been able to build. And, you know, I don't really have a super big desire to leave and to go. Um, so, um, yeah, seeing this community, I was like, man, I really wanna get plugged in. I want to be able to make a name for myself here, even though that seemed a little bit intimidating at the time. And so, man, just- and here making, you are. Yeah, just making connections. I feel like, 
is the biggest um, way to kind of just put your foot in the door. I mean, like go to the events, go to, um, you know, reach out to your local art center if you're an artist and, you know, younger and getting and volunteering and really making an effort to make connections and to make and build relationships with people and other fellow artists, even if there is a big age gap. Um, I'm, I promise you there, I promise you, they're probably more than willing to show you like Diane, even take you under their wing and show you a craft, even if you're not familiar with one. And it may seem like an age gap at first, but once you get yeah. to know all of these yeah. people, you to you quickly forget. <laughs> you do. That is absolutely true. Yes, that is absolutely true. So I have a question for you. So what, uh, like, well, I guess it's not a question. It's a suggestion. You say, come in, get network, get plugged in. Yeah. I say, become a member. Join the Rockport Center for the Arts, whether you're in Rockport or if you're in Kentucky or if you're in San Diego, it doesn't matter. With YouTube, we are extending beyond just Rockport, Texas. And part yeah. of our goal is to get folks like Juliana on the map like all of our artists. And when you support the Rockport Center for the Arts with the dream of coming here and visiting all of these smiling faces, you will see just what a great town this is. And you can become a part of us. Next year, you could be sitting where we are on Rockport Studio Live. So Doc, let's give away this garment. Right on, right on. All right, so uh, we'll, everybody in the chat room, if you're new to the chat room or if you're new to YouTube, if you'll go down to the right hand corner down there, there's a little red subscribe button. Click that little button that lets us know you like the show and you want to see more of what we're showing here. And then hit the thumbs up. Everybody wants a little thumbs up. Thumbs up. Um, let us know you like the show and any comments you want to make, definitely make them. But right now we're going to give this little garment away. And I believe there was how many people? 40? We want to go with number. Yeah, there's 36. Let's go with 50. One through 50. We'll go random generator. I'm gonna yeah, show so one here. through 50, numbers one through 50, please type them in the chat box. And Juliana, I'm gonna make the spotlight on you. Okay. If you would please show off that beautiful garment. Yep, right on. That's what you'll get right there. That's what you're gonna win. Let's get some numbers into the chat. I wish we could win it. <laughs> I know. Well, we're, I'm, I'm saying we have a bunch of people watching, but if people don't start typing in numbers, oh, we have yeah. one, we have two. We have some numbers coming now in. Now they're coming in, some 29. All right, 16, let them keep coming in. A few more numbers. Excellent, we have 237, Shelly Bryan, pick a new number. Now we go by Price is Right rules here, folks. So that means the closest to the number without going over. All right, three, Shelly Bryan, pick a new number. We're gonna go for a couple more oh. minutes. And while we are doing this, I'm going to share my screen one more time. Yeah. And say, what else we have going on this week? We have happy hour. Now happy hour with the, uh, with the artists took a break last Friday for the holiday weekend, but they're gonna be back with a vengeance and they're ready to talk and they're ready to enjoy their Tito's. Tito's is a sponsor and we thank them very much for all their dedication to the Rockport Center for the Arts. And I wanna, speaking of Tito's, they are also a sponsor of the Rockport Studio Tour. So beyond them, we have Coastline Custom Homes, Windway Gallery, and the Salome Ace Hardware right in Rockport on Business 37. So are the numbers still coming in, Doc? I think we're going to give them about another 10 or 15 more seconds. You guys keep typing some numbers in. All right. Hi, a... Juliana, how about you try that piece on? Show it off. Yeah. So Juliana, as, as part of uh, Diane's Silversmith crew, uh, does take part in the Silver Meltdown every November. It's a fashion show where our local silversmiths break out their wares, show them off on our local models, and ladies, it's a woman-only event. You come out, share, have a few cocktails, and see some gorgeous artwork, some gorgeous jewelry, and some gorgeous clothing, and you get to buy it all. And that will be in November, and Juliana will be a part of that again this year. 
So, all right, Cisco Wilson, you're the last one in. Doc, all right, let's we'll see take how over. you share your screen. Let's see let's who the go winner with, is. Uh, share the screen. <sighs> Share the random generator screen. There we go. Can everybody see that screen? 11 is not the number, folks. Yeah. 11 is not the number. All yes. right. So I'm going to count this down. Three, two, one, one and generate. Go. It's number 38. Who's 38. The first number 38? All right. Simon Alfredo Pippen is 37. Let's see if there's a 38. Eight. No, Kimmy. Kimmy is a winner. Right on. <laughs> How about that? Kimmy, I'm going to ask you to reach out to Juliana. You have her number. And let's stop your sharing of the screen. There you go. And I'm going to put everyone's... Juliana, how about you wave one last time for the camera? Thank you, everyone. Congratulations. Great. Now, I have one last thing to announce for everyone, and that is our... Um, our featured artist for next week, and that is Bonnie Lou Prouty. Bonnie Lou Prouty, Prouty was an executive director of the Rockport Center for the Arts back in the 90s. She's an artist, a longtime resident here, an amazing artist. She was unable to connect with us today. She had the link, she just couldn't quite make it work, but that's, don't worry. We are gonna have some technical assistance with her next week helping her out and she's going to do an amazing collage demonstration. So next week, mark your calendars for all you Bonnie Lou Prouty fans. She will be on screen right here at Rockport Studio Live. So everyone, one last time you're all on screen. How about you wave to Rockport and beyond and say uh, from us here in Rockport, you all have a wonderful week and get making. Take care. Thanks for joining. Bye. Awesome.